Hi everybody, Dave Moraine back, Math Notations videos with the SATs uh, looming a couple of weeks from now. SAT 1, SAT 2 subject tests, Math 1, Math 2. I thought we would do a uh, geometry problem instead of um, ratio and proportion like with the workers in the houses, which uh, you may have seen the other day. So let's start uh, with a cube. I'm not artistic, so this is a very crude attempt. Okay. And standardized tests like cube problems uh, because they're well known. The formulas are established early on in school. And there are so many variations on cube problems and how they relate to other figures. In this particular case, we're going to look at four points, A, B, C, and D. A and C are opposite, diagonally opposite vertices. I don't want that one, I want this one. Um, B and D are midpoints of two opposite edges, and we're going uh, to connect the um, four points, A, B, C, and D. forming a quadrilateral that appears to be a square and that's the whole point of this discussion. So <clears throat> you're given the volume of the cube is 64 uh, B and D are the midpoints of two edges find the area of quadrilateral ABCD. <clears throat> so this could be given as a challenge problem, review for standardized assessments, uh, maybe review for a geometry final exam. Um, it's one of those deeper questions that a student should have the opportunity to see, to dialogue about, to work with a partner. Good discussion. But it doesn't seem all that difficult. Um, most of your students who are reasonably strong in math and recall some basics of geometry will jump right in. Well, this is um, 4. All the edges are 4 because the volume is 64. 4 times 4 times 4. Length times width times height. Basics. And this will be 2 and 2. So by the Pythagorean theorem, this will be c squared equals 16 plus 4, a squared plus b squared. I'm going to sk skip some steps, so this is 2 radical 5, so this is 2 radical 5. Similarly, this is 2 radical 5. So you have a four-sided figure with four congruent sides, a, b, b, c, c, d, and a, d um, clearly are congruent from <laughs> the Pythagorean theorem or congruent right triangles. And so the students, and I've seen many, many good students, strong students, jump and say, well, this is easy. The area is side times side, side squared. Four times five is 20. We're done. Are we? <laughs> now you can ask the question. So let's see. It's a square, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. How do we know? Oh, it has four congruent sides. Really? Does that make a square? So you get the idea. The pedagogy here is ask questions. You've thought it through as the educator. You are prepared for their questions, their comments. You can anticipate common mistakes. That's the secret. Once you anticipate their errors, we can really play games in the class to get them to think more deeply um, and challenge them. And, and that's what learning is all about. We're provoking them. We're trying to make them uncomfortable sometimes with their assumptions, cognitive dissonance, uh, disequilibrium, whatever you want to call the, you know, using fancy terms. Is it a square? Well, 
if it's not a square, boys and girls, then what is it? What do you call a figure with four equal sides, a quadrilateral with four congruent sides? That's right. could be a rhombus. These may look like right angles where the two red sides meet, but are they? Uh, so we have certainly a rhombus. Is it a square? Well, one way of determining that without worrying about angles is to look at the diagonals. Now, this diagonal, oh, by the way, we're finding the area of this figure. This diagonal here is the diagonal inside the cube. Now, you can work this out in detail, and it probably is a good idea to review this. But this is a standard computation in geometry when you get to three-dimensional or space geometry. I'm just going to write down a formula that students uh, could use for standardized assessments. So <coughs> the diagonal of the cube, that means the longest diagonal in a cube, the longest segment joining any two points of a cube, is edge radical 3. Again, the diagonal of a cube is edge radical 3. So if the edge of our cube is 4, the longer diagonal here is 4 root 3. Now that can be approved by the Pythagorean, the three-dimensional version of the Pythagorean theorem. If you want to introduce that, you can do it with two right triangles, the standard method of geometry. You could use the distance formula in three dimensions if you coordinateize and make an XYZ axis. There are so many things you could do here. But I'm just going to state it, edge radical 3, you can have them prove that. Anyway, the other diagonal, BD, well, this is interesting. Um, is it the same length? Well, let's consider the diagonal on the bottom of the cube. In other words, the diagonal of the square base. And let's consider joining B and D. I think most students would see that BD is equal to this diagonal. Well, here's the square base. Here's the diagonal, 4, 4, 4, radical 2. So this problem reviews a lot of geometry. There's your 45, 45. So the other diagonal is 4, radical 2. So now we go to the area of a rhombus one-half the product of the diagonals. Good review. You don't need to do this. Well, you know, you can find an alternate way to get this. So that's one-half, uh, the longer diagonal, 4 radical 3, the shorter diagonal, 4 radical 2, 16 over 2, 8 radical 6 is your answer, not the square root of uh, 20. Right? <laughs> In fact, uh, you can uh, verify whether this is less than or more than um, 20, I should say. Because it's not a square, um, what would you think? What would your instincts be? Ask your students that. Without the calculator, should this, area, should this rhombus have smaller area than a square with side of 2 radical 5? Let them think about that. That's really important. All right. Um, there are many more things we could do here. We don't need the one-half diagonal, one diagonal, two for a rhombus. You could split it up into four congruent right triangles, take the half diagonals, and use one-half base times height multiplied by four. But I did want to show you a problem that um, just gets students to challenge their assumptions reviewing a, a good part of uh, geometry and I just think it's a, a nice review before all these standardized tests that are coming up. I invite you to comment on this video. Go to my blog Math Notations. Just Google Math Notations. You don't have to put a space in between. Uh, I'm going to post this uh, video on my blog soon and it really helps me if you rate the videos um, if you enjoy it, rate it appropriately. 